二零二二年第十六條題目就承襲翻第十五條嘅呢一幅圖片啦，就顯示咗一個氣囊俾大家睇嘅。咁題目就問啦，呢一幅圖片所顯示嘅氣囊啦，究竟啦有啲咩嘅適應性特徵俾佢去做氣體交換咧？咁呢個題目啦，首先就考我哋啦，閱讀下呢個生物科嘅圖像啦 ，PQRS 嗰啲結構，頭先我哋講咗啦。第二啦，就係、是、考翻我哋咧概念整合法啦。點樣去理解翻一個氣囊？佢有咩適應性特徵，俾佢做氣體交換咧？點樣可以做好啲咧？仲有啦，就係考翻我哋直線抽擊答題法啦。因為今次嘅題目咧，好特別地就係問翻喺幅圖所顯示嘅特徵，唔係求求其走去問你，喂，氣囊咧有咩適應性特徵啊？唔係啊，所以啦，直線抽擊答題法就幫到你啦。虛無全稱喺幅圖度見到啲乜嘢，嗰、那個先係答案。咁啊，逐一擊破咯喎！第一個啦，就係呼吸道嘅末端咧，佢係有好多嘅球狀嘅構造嘅。咁圖像所顯示嘅又真係好多氣囊或者我哋講嘅肺泡啦。咁所以啦，如果真係要表達嘅話咧，真係、哦、我哋有好多嘅氣囊啦，就提供到一個大嘅表面面積啦，就俾氣體做擴散嘅。所以第一句咧係圖像能夠顯示到嘅。去到第二句啦，佢就話啦。喺呢個呼吸管道嘅末端咧，嗰、那個壁啊係好薄嘅，咁呢一句就有啲問題啦。嗱，雖然咧喺我哋本書咧，我哋見到嘅，咦，氣囊嘅壁咧的確係薄嘅，有幾薄啊？就係、是、一個 cell 咁薄，或者所謂一個 cell 咁厚啦，就去縮短咗個擴散嘅距離啦，的確係幫助到氣體交換咧能夠做得好啲嘅。無奈就係、是、啦，你睇呢幅圖，你見到嗰個氣囊嘅切面咩？你睇唔到佢個 section 嘅，佢個切面嘅，你又從何得知呼吸管道嘅末端咧有一個薄壁咧？咁所以啦，雖然氣囊真係有個薄壁，但係喺幅圖度睇唔到，咁所以啦，佢就唔係正確答案啦。而去到第三咧，佢就講啦，呼吸管道嘅末端咧係被血管所去覆蓋住、包圍住嘅。咁我哋係呢幅圖啦，就真係睇得見。咁氣囊啦，有好多微血管包住啦，就係、是、咧提供一個快速嘅空氣嘅運輸啦、運送啦，就無論啦係運送二氧化碳去我哋嘅氣囊做一個氣體嘅交換啦，去踢走佢哋啦，又或者啦將啲氧氣喺個氣囊嗰處運走去，去到身體唔同部分啦。咁呢個咧都係建基於有一個較為斜嘅濃度階梯嘅。咁呢個就係靠個血管啦去所造成噶啦。咁呢個適應性特徵就係由好多嘅微血管去覆蓋住我哋嘅氣囊啦。而喺呢幅圖咧，亦都真係見到嘅。咁所以第三句咧都係答案。咁所以答案係二三四。所以終極答案咧就係 B 啦。咁好多同學咧其實都係睇埋第二句咯。佢哋可能會覺得啦，係咯，第二句係本書都咁樣講嘅喎。不過問題就係喺幅圖你睇唔睇得見咁解啫嘛。咁啊，有多一樣嘢咧，提下大家嘅。今次嘅題目咧，主要咧就係講緊左手邊嘅氣囊嘅特徵。咁下次啦，如果作為一條短題目或者長題目去問下你啦，喂，要你解釋一下氣囊嘅適應性特徵又得唔得啊？梗係可以啦。所以啦，快快手睇翻呢一段概念整合法咧，揾下書啦噃。Two two two question sixteen. It follows the question fifteen. We still use this diagram. It shows the air sac. And the question it asks us which of the following adaptive features of the air sac for gases exchange can be illustrated in the above diagram. So for this question, firstly, we need to be able to read the biological drawing. Secondly, we need to recall the adaptive features of the air sac for gas exchange. How does the gases exchange the structure help it to perform the function well? Perform the function better. Meanwhile, you also need to recall the skills for the stretch to the point. So let's take a look at the answer for the adaptive features of the air sac. Firstly, we talk about the free sputtery tract and in numerous spherical structures, which is the alveoli or the air sac. So you can see that in the book, oh, for the adaptive feature of the air sac for gas exchange, large in number, there are lots of air sacs. And it can provide a larger surface area for the diffusion of the gases, and we can really see this in this diagram. So statement number one is correct, and then for statement number two is talking about the end of the respiratory tract has a thin wall, 
from the textbook, oh, we can really see it. A thin wall, one cell thick epithelium of the air sac, it can reduce the diffusion distance. So that's why the gas exchange or the oxygen, you know say, therefore the gas exchange can be, you know what I'm saying? Therefore the gas exchange can be, you know what I'm saying? So the gas exchange can take place at a higher rate. However, can you really see this in this diagram? Not really. Can you see the wall? Not really, because this diagram is doesn't show the section of the air set. It doesn't really cut the cross section to let you see the wall of the respiratory tract. Therefore, this statement is wrong. Therefore, you can get the answer already. The answer is B. So for the last statement, the end of the respiratory tract is covered with the blood vessels. You can see that there are a lot of blood vessels covering the air sac. And it also, you know what I'm saying? And it's also mentioned in the textbook. The air sac is richly supplied with the capillaries, allow rapid transport of the gases to and away from the air sac, no matter for the oxygen to the air sac, and then will be carried away from the air sac or the carbon dioxide will be carried to the air set and then removed so that a steep concentration gradient can be maintained for the diffusion. And one reminder I would like to talk about is that this question, it focuses on the features of the air set. So what about next time it may change it as the short question and then ask you to explain the adaptive features. How do these structures help the air set to perform gas exchange in a better way? in a higher efficiency way.